The NHL trade deadline has come and gone, and there were lots of surprises along the way. We've got you covered from the buyers to the sellers to the teams that stood pat. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Rachel, wow, what a... Crazy week it was, culminating with the 3 o'clock Eastern time deadline today. Uh, Have you come up for air since the trade deadline passed? Listen, I I think it's that Thomas Hurdle deal has me shook. I I cannot believe that happened right now. I I could have believed it this offseason, but wow. Yeah, did not see that one coming, especially with Hurdle being injured. Uh, although he may be ready to come back for the playoffs. And uh, wow, is right. Uh, no no question about that. A lot of big deals made. Let, let's start with that hurdle deal because Vegas, I mean, Vegas just finds a way. Right. Uh, they are, I think, cat math wizards. They do things that are very unexpected all the time and seem to be a team that just wants to go for it every year, and they figure out a way to get it done and use every inch of LTIR they can. You you ever get the feeling that their front office team is playing chess and everyone else is playing checkers? (laughs) I mean... Yes and no. I I just feel like they're willing to, to push boundaries that other teams maybe aren't, and you know, take risks that other teams maybe aren't. And being in Vegas, that is very appropriate. Indeed. The question is, eventually, will that catch up with them on the one hand? And on the other hand, can they win another Stanley Cup doing things that way? So, uh, you know, Hurdle obviously adds a a dynamic offensive player to the the Vegas lineup. Uh, I, I guess you're sort of trying to replace the production of a Mark Stone. Yeah, I think that was the biggest issue with Mark Stone uh, going on IR, that they just felt like they needed to replace his role uh, to get them through this season. And and so that's what they're doing. I mean, it's it's not just Thomas Hurdle, but they picked up Noah Hannafin. They pick up Anthony Mantha. I mean, this this is a team that is going for it. Yeah, no no doubt about that. And I, I think that, uh, you know, the defending Stanley Cup champions, no doubt about it, they are all in. And, uh, you know, uh, another big deal that was made earlier today, uh, Tyler Toffoli headed to Winnipeg. And Winnipeg seems like another team that is going for it this year. Yeah, Winnipeg had such a strong middle to the season. And we're up there for quite some time. Other teams have caught up and, and taken over. And I feel like they just needed that one extra push, right? That one extra element. And maybe that's what they felt too. And, and Tyler Toffoli is an excellent pickup. Um, I think that, you know, he can just help provide a spark. He's got Stanley Cup experience. I think that'll be a really good pickup for the Jets. Yeah, I think so too. And, and you know, the cost wasn't that high, uh, so I think that that made sense for them right there. What were some of the other big deals today that really caught your eye? Yeah, I don't know that there were huge deals uh, beyond maybe those two, but there were definitely some uh, significant moves. I would say Matt Dumba to the Lightning was one of those. Um, the Lightning are in a really precarious position here, I would say. 
you know, is, is this the last hurrah for, for them? And they just felt like they needed a, a couple pieces. And, you know, Matt Dumba is not having a great season at all, but maybe like a change of scenery, a playoff run uh, that will turn things around for him and he can contribute. And I would, I would say the other one is his nets off to the Canes. Yeah. Carolina definitely seems to be going for it right now. And, and, uh, surprised it's an in-division trade, but what do you think Kuznetsov adds to the Hurricanes lineup? Well, I, again, I think he adds the experience of actually winning a Stanley Cup where the Canes have stalled out recently. Um, so I, I do think there's that. And I, I just think that, you know, there wasn't a place for him in Washington, obviously, when they put him on waivers. Right. Um, and, you know, we'll we'll talk about the Caps later, but I think there's a lot of change happening there right now. And so, you know, why not give Kuznetsov an opportunity somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, he was clearly no longer in the Capitals' plans. And, and you know, it, it seems to me that that's a low-risk, high-reward kind of move for Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, those are some of the, the bigger deals that went down today. And, you know, there were just, in my mind, some, I, I was a little bit uh, surprised by some of the players that did not uh, end up being traded. Uh, you know, Pavel Butchnevich not going anywhere. Max Pacioretty, Frank Vitrano. Jacob Chikrin did not go anywhere, and neither did Jacob Markstrom. What are your thoughts about some of the players who ended up staying put? Yeah, I'm not surprised, honestly, with any of them, ex except for maybe Buchnevich. I think that's the only one of those that I might have expected to move today. I just think the situations weren't right with those other guys. And I, I do think, you know, Markstrom like was going to stay in Calgary because if he hadn't been traded yet and the fact that the devils like did other goalie things today, which we'll <laughs> talk about. Um, I think that was really the only option for him. So I'm not hugely surprised here. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, overall there were, there were some players I thought Chikrin for sure would be moved, but uh, yeah. Ottawa <laughs> staying put with that. And, and it's, a little tough to try to figure out, you know, what the senators are and are not doing at this point, as far as, uh, you know, I thought they would sell more than they ended up selling. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, but, you know, they're in a weird spot, too. And and I think people were kind of hesitant to do a deal on Chikrin um, with the inconsistency there. But, you know, we talked about Carolina, and they are one of the other teams that absolutely went for it at deadline, uh, getting Jake Gensel uh, from the Pence. Man, the, the Canes did some in-division dealing in this <laughs> deadline. They did. Uh, yeah, so, you know, between Kuznetsov and, and getting Jake Gensel from the Pence, who's also hurt, by the way, a lot of hurt guys getting traded. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at deadline. Uh, they were the third party in the Ilya Lubushkin deal earlier this week. Uh, but I, I do think that they gave up some significant prospects in the deal to the Pens. Uh, but they're, they're a team that just hasn't quite been able to put it all together. And having veteran guys with Stanley Cup experience like Kuznetsov, like Gensel, could be the thing to get them there. Yeah, I mean, here's a team that has been so successful in the regular season, and they've gone on some fairly long playoff runs, but never quite gotten to the promised land. And uh, yeah, getting guys with experience is certainly one way to try to get over the top. I mean, different teams have done that over the years. Maybe the 1994 Rangers were the most blatant example. Uh, but yeah, uh, getting some of those experienced guys certainly could help Carolina, and it's not going to be easy because there's a lot of competition uh, in, in both conferences right now. It seems like, uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that are all in. We are going to talk a little bit more about teams that are all in and also some teams that are on the seller side of the ledger. We've got all that and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On NHL podcast. It is always a struggle to find time to make healthy eating decisions and eating better is so much easier with Factors Delicious ready to eat meals. 
Factor's two-minute meals are your secret weapon. The ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. You can skip the grocery store's prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, you get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more, plus over 60 add-ons like snacks, smoothies, breakfast, and so many more options, you'll have a ton of nutritious and delicious choices to kickstart your healthy eating habits. And Factor is flexible. You can change your order up every week with as little or as much as you need, and you can pause or reschedule anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use the code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on NHL 50, all one word at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. So, Rachel, uh, some other teams that you feel are going for it and are all in. Uh, Colorado Avalanche, absolutely uh, acquiring Casey Middlestat from the Sabres in a one-for-one for for Bowen Byram, uh, acquiring Sean Walker from the Flyers, uh, giving up a first-rounder for for him, which good work, Danny Breer, have to put that in there, (laughs) and Brandon Duhame from the Wild. Uh, They had a few uh, prospect-level deals, and it's almost like you know, this happened at trade deadline, but uh, Valerie Nishushkin is getting activated uh, for them as well. And and I just think that this is a a really important year for them. The West is absolutely bonkers right now. And uh, I think Middlestat will find a really good spot with the Avs. Um, I think that he'll fit in nicely and Walker will help shore up the D. Yeah, looks looks like they are all in, you know, I, I, and understandably so. Uh, but what what about the Nashville Predators? I was a little surprised how active they were in buying at the deadline. Yeah, they picked up uh, Jason Zucker and Anthony Beauvillier, uh, who you have some experience with, Gil, yes. as, as a New York Islander. Um and I think that, you know, they're a team that wasn't necessarily expected to be in the thick of it at the beginning of the season, uh, but find themselves in the first wild card spot as of today. And it pretty comfortably there, I would say, in terms of who's around them and games in hand. And so, you know, if, if they have a shot to go a little further in the playoffs this year, then why not? Um, you know, we thought maybe they would trade Soros, uh, but they've, decided to hold on to him and and have this playoff run um i I think you know these are good solid they're not super splashy moves but solid moves that help improve this team yeah it solidifies the depth and and gives them some more options and you know kind of uh interesting because you mentioned anthony bevillier he's having a reunion now with gm barry trotz who coached him on long island so you sort of add that to the mix and it's one of those situations where, you know, if the trade deadline was two weeks earlier, Nashville's probably selling, but they got hot at the right time. They did. Um, I would say other teams that went for it with maybe lesser results than, say, the Hurricanes or the Avalanche. Um, I- I'm going to give the Florida Panthers like a B, B plus here, because I think that, you know, picking up Tarasenko, Kyle Ocposo, Magnus Helberg as a depth goalie, um, I, I think on the extended Forsling, I think that honestly extending Forsling was the biggest part of anything they yeah, did yeah, uh, for sure. But I, I think that, you know, they, they added some pieces here. I, I don't know that they necessarily needed to do a ton to begin with, but I think, you know, it, it just wasn't super splashy, I would say. And then, you know, another team that I would add to that mix, how about the New York Rangers? Yeah, they sort of last minute got Jack Roslovic. Um, you know, that was a thing that happened. So I think that was a good move for them. Um, Alex Wenberg is a really good addition uh, from the Kraken as well. And then signing uh, Quick to an extension. Yes. Um, who's been a remarkable success for the Rangers this year. He has outplayed Igor Shosturkin for large stretches of this season, much to everybody's surprise. And, you know, Connecticut native, sort of back in his uh, 
hometown and uh, or as close to it as he can get. So yeah, nice little move there. Uh, how about some of the teams that are selling right now? Uh, you know, well, there's still a couple more teams that I okay. would say we're on the more buying side of things, but Go maybe ahead. again, we're in a splashy, I would say the Edmonton Oilers. Yes. I, I would give them a, you tried sticker. <laughs> um, I mean, Adam Henrique is a good pickup. Don't get me wrong. Um, but then, you know, beyond that, Troy Stetcher. Okay. Um, I, I think that they're going to struggle in these playoffs a little bit um, unless they peak at exactly the right time, but we'll see how Henrique fits in. And if, and what he adds there. Um, they're an excellent team. I just oh, yeah. don't know that they did anything huge to make them um, significantly better than they were. And then the Tampa Bay Lightning, um, again, you know, I, I think that they're a team uh, that I, I think really is on their last run here. Um, so getting Duclair uh, from the Sharks and Matt Dumba, um, adding some depth, but we'll see if that has an effect on a potential playoff run. Were you surprised that they were even that aggressive at the trade deadline? Yeah, honestly, I, I, I did not expect them to to do very much. But yeah, they did. Uh, and, and I wonder what that you know in two or three years, what these you know what if any effect the fact that they did not sell and they kind of mildly bought will have on this franchise. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as the sellers are concerned, who was on the top of your list? Uh, obviously the Caps. Um, it's over in Washington. <laughs> this trade deadline made it very clear. Um, I will be intrigued. The Caps have a ton of really good prospects in their system right now, just like waiting in the wings. And I feel like the Caps, given what they did in this uh, trade deadline, what they'll probably do this offseason, I think that they're going to have a really good um, rebuild that's not going to be a full rebuild. Like they're going to be able to turn it around a little bit quicker than I think you might expect for a typical one. I, I think they've put the pieces in place to be able to do that to some degree. And to me, you know, one of the sellers that sort of, I think it threw me for a loop. I know it threw a lot of other people for a loop, the Pittsburgh Penguins. What do you think about how they handled this deadline? Yeah, uh, Kyle Dubas, man. I, again, I will never assume anything with him or no. know anything about what went on um, in his head. You know, they sent bunting to the Canes, uh, you know, really interesting there. Um, Edmondson went to Toronto, um, Kuznetsov to the Canes. Like, uh, I just, I think that the Pens are in, in a real difficult spot here overall. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you make a big trade and Sidney Crosby, your captain, the face of the franchise forever comes on and, and basically says, I don't understand what we're doing here. That's not a good sign. No. And, you know, even having Crosby trade rumors out there. Uh, was a little bit shocking, I must say. Yeah, no question. I don't think we're ever going to see that happen in the, certainly not, you know, in the near future. I think Crosby will finish his career with the Pittsburgh Penguins, but even hearing those rumors, certainly a, a bit of a surprise. Any other sellers that stood out in your mind? Well, the Devils were really interesting because they were sellers except for the goaltending where they got right. two new goaltenders. Um, you know, they traded Vitek Vanacek to the Sharks for Capo Kakinen, um, the goaltender. And then they also acquired Allen from the Habs. Yep. So clearly we we all know they've been having goaltending problems. I don't know that this is the, the fix, though. That's the problem. Right. How much better does this these two goalies make them. It, it seems like they're trading, you know, six for half a dozen. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Um, we'll, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Also have the flames, I would say. Yeah. Even though they didn't trade Markstrom, uh, they certainly made a lot of other deals and, and I can't say I was shocked by that. I mean, I, I, the way they sort of fell off in the standings in recent weeks, made it pretty clear that that's what they were going to do. Absolutely. So any other sellers 
that uh, caught your eye? Well, of course, the sharks, um, yeah. you know, especially with that hurdle deal. Um, I think that it, it was, you know, inevitable they were going to do some selling. But a, at a certain point, like, who do they have left to sell that can get a significant return, right, in yeah. terms of these assets? So we'll see what happens with them in the off season. I think that's going to be the bigger time to see what they do and what their plan is. Logan Couture, anybody? I mean, right. That's about what's left uh, as far as established players are concerned. And how about the Coyotes? Where would you put them? Yeah, I think that, you know, obviously they were smaller sellers than they have been in the past, but they, you know, again, they have got a bunch of prospects um, and they have a ton of assets and are always, you know, I think uh, willing and able to take on some cap for other teams as well. So, yeah, I think, you know, what happens with them this off season in many ways is going to be um, a huge question mark for the league. Yeah. Including where they may play in the future. Yes, but, exactly. You know, it's been hanging over this team for like more than a decade already. It's, uh, yep. it, 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 it's pretty crazy. I hope one way or the other that they end up finding a permanent home whether it's in the desert or somewhere else. But uh, wow, what a what a busy day. I'm just trying to catch my breath after this week of uh, wheeling and dealing. We're going to talk about some teams that more or less stood pat and then maybe some of the big winners and losers at the trade deadline. All that and more still to come on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that have used Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on offer valid through march 31st go to indeed.com slash locked on to claim your 75 dollar credit before march 31st indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed so we talked about the buyers we talked about the sellers how about teams that kind of stood pat at the trade deadline and uh i'll start with my new york islanders who did absolutely nothing uh i guess their big move mid-season was hiring a new head coach in patrick Waugh. but i was surprised that lou lamorello did not pull the trigger on at least a minor deal at some point yeah i think you know given the way the metro is and everything that happened i think that um it, it is it's not shocking but it's I, I would say if i was an islander fan i would be disappointed yeah i i think that's accurate and look there they certainly could have traded away for example oliver wallstrom who's going to be an unrestricted free agent uh during the off season and has been riding the pine lately uh there certainly were some players they were interested in buying but i think at the end of the day, the fact that their prospect pool is ranked so close to the bottom, if not at the bottom in the league, they probably just didn't have the, the assets that other teams were looking for. And that's why they ended up not doing anything. A another team that did not make a lot of moves. How about the Vancouver Canucks? Yeah, obviously the big move for them, uh, deadline adjacent, was acquiring Elias Lindholm. And so I felt like they just didn't need to add any more uh, which is you know it's certainly a choice we'll see um i don't know that it was the right or the wrong decision but uh the only kind of major rumor that was out there was them potentially signing phil kessel um right. which they did not do so 
um, we'll see if they, the gamble that they made on kind of putting all their movement eggs into the Lindholm basket, we'll see if that pans out for them in the playoffs. Yeah, and, and they've been struggling a little bit more as of late. So I'm a little surprised they didn't try to shake things up, even with a with, with a small deal to just sort of send a message. Anyone else that uh, you include in your do-nothing group? Well, I, I would say do very little um, in the Boston Bruins. I think that – I don't think they needed to do much, if anything, right? I think they're in a really good spot. There were talks that maybe they would, you know, trade a goaltender – uh, because they have two excellent goaltenders, but they're going to ride this through the season. I, for one, am glad because I need to see those hugs after every game uh, between Swayman and Olmark, and I would not want to separate those two at all. But they did uh, pick up Pat Maroon and Andrew Peak. Um, you know, it's not nothing. I think it's definitely kind of reserves and physical toughness, uh, you know, with Maroon especially. So, you know, I think extra bodies, if you can fit them in, are never a bad thing. Uh, but I, I do not think they needed to do very much here. Yeah. And, you know, Pat Maroon is one of those guys who just seems to play his best during the playoffs. He's he's the kind of player that you that every team wants on their roster in the postseason when things are a little tighter and more physical. So I, I can understand, you know, making that move. but. Uh, Overall, yeah, Boston did not make any earth-shattering moves at the deadline. Anyone else uh, on the list for you? Well, I would say, like, they did things, but I we have not mentioned the Toronto Maple Leafs That's on true. this show as of yet. And I I feel like there's probably a little bit of disappointment, especially given some of the other deals that happened around the league and, you know, they picked up at Joel Edmondson from the caps, uh, Connor Dewar from the Minnesota wild. Uh, I, I just, they, they just didn't, the, the Ilya Labushkin deal was probably like the biggest one that they had. Right. And is, is that enough? I mean, I think this, this trade deadline is going to be a touchstone in terms of are people going to look back and kind of micromanage what the, the Leafs have done? Well, what are fans for? I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And, and obviously, you know, here's a team that has not won a Stanley Cup since 1967, which I'm sure Leaf fans are tired of hearing. But, uh, you know, certainly there is a lot of pressure there to try to, you know, uh, end that long, long drought. And, uh, you know, not as many moves as certainly I was anticipating from Toronto. But uh, here we are. They are going with the guys that got them there. Absolutely. Any team that you would say was the big winner and big loser at the trade deadline? Or is it too early to tell? I think it's too early to tell with this trade deadline. I think so many contending teams made significant moves that we'll, have, we'll need the playoffs to look back and say, okay, which of these guys had the impact that was necessary to get them through to the cup? Yeah, it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see how it all plays out. We are set up for a great stretch run and the Stanley Cup playoffs are around the corner. The weather's even getting a little bit warmer. Heck, we're moving the clocks uh this weekend as well so uh we are you know it, it, it's getting to be playoff time we're getting closer and closer to that situation uh just a an exciting and surprising week of trades here in the national hockey league locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channels app Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. I want to thank everyone again for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Uh, I will be back on Monday talking to three of our local hosts with the biggest stories from around the league. And of course, we are here every Monday through Friday covering the NHL from top to bottom. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. 
And thanks for listening to and watching the Locked On NHL podcast.